How much with the Foley scandal from two years ago and now the the embezzlement, embezzlement scandal with the RCCC, how much of a role did those two scandals play in your decision making and whether you thought you could win again? Well, first of all, um, I was very careful in the words I chose. I believe I would win re-election. I think my consultants and team believe we'd win this election. And I never walk away from a fight, particularly when I don't even know who my opponents might be come uh, now till September. But let's look at first Foley. Uh, I had a conversation with this community <coughs> two years ago when this issue came forward. And I told people privately and publicly what I knew. The Ethics Committee verified all of that in true form. What I found ironic, there was never much media coverage over two people that startled me, that in the ethics investigation came out that they knew about the first set of emails before I or any other member of leadership or the speaker did. They were the Democratic conference chair now and the Democratic whip, Clyburn and, and uh, uh, Rahm Emanuel. And so it's almost ironic that the Democrats were peddling that throughout a system where Republican leadership didn't know. And I think it's very clear, 2006, as I said in my remarks, was uh, the toughest race of, of a generation. I've been elected since 1973. I have a pretty good idea what 74 was like, and certainly 94 when it brought Republican gains, when I was uh, active in the state assembly, and uh, my predecessor, Bill Paxton, helped flip the House to Republican control. So I think that uh, that conversation with the community was clear, and we went fine. Now, it's very seldom my colleagues of Washington would ever say that if you look at the Washington Post, you will get a fair and balanced story relative to uh, the instance with the NRCC. Some have called it an accounting scandal. It is not an accounting scandal. I want to be very clear on the record. This is not an accounting scandal. If you study federal law or read the clips, then there are two that were done by the Washington Post in the last uh, 10 days. They outline very clearly the aspect that uh, under federal law, uh, the compliance officer becomes the wholesale uh, final person of communicating uh, finances with the FEC. And what we have here is the potential of an embezzlement. Uh, when we've recognized it, uh, we've reported it to not only the bank who approved all of the financial statements as we did lines of credit, but also uh, to the FBI so they could do an investigation plus there's forensic audits going. This employee was a controller and the assistant treasurer from about 1995 till 2003. Anyone here, including the media, would know that I usually promote from within if they're qualified. We promoted the controller assistant treasurer to controller and treasurer. Those facts are moving through fairly rapidly. I hope that those will be resolved. And, and we are victims at the committee. It's a sad and tragic event. But also, when you read the Washington Post, you'll see there's some 80 other members of Congress that are affected by the same individual. And because that's an ongoing investigation, we'll let them do their investigation. I fully support the investigation. The only thing I would say back home, look, I'm a politician. My opponents agree with me on more issues than they don't, so about all they could do is throw a little brick and brat on uh, the fact that was Reynolds involved or uh, what's this or what's that in the press. And quite frankly, most of you who read their statements, those were prepared by DCCC or some other political operative to stir the waters. I expect that. That's just what politics is. And my opponents made it uh, a political issue versus talking about the issues. I don't think it's a factor at all. So Next question.